Merritt here. No normal Channel F this week because we were off for Memorial Day, but we've got something special for you instead. A conversation with James Rolfe, also known as the Angry Video Game Nerd. This was a real pleasure for me. I've been watching James's videos since I was in college, and he arguably defined an entire era of video games coverage on YouTube. We talked about horror, being a parent, and becoming the subject of nostalgia yourself. It was a fun, wide-ranging conversation, and I'm grateful to James for sparing some time out of his busy schedule to have it with me. And hey, if you're here specifically for the interview, consider checking out the rest of Channel F. It's a fun game show format where I make my coworkers participate in wacky challenges relating to video games for your amusement. So without further ado, here's James. Yeah, um, how, how's it going? Um, it's, uh, it's a Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Um, and uh, you're in uh, the Northwest, right? Or Northeast, yeah. sorry. East, yeah, Northeast, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are you in the same time zone? I forget. I am, yeah, I'm in New York. Okay. So it's a pretty nice day. Um, and I thought we'd start off talking about something that uh, is is kind of the opposite of that, which is horror. Um, so mm -hmm. I saw recently that you're going to be in the upcoming... Um, what, what the the horror compilation or the uh, the documentary you uh, yeah. taste, taste of fear or oh uh, yeah in search of darkness in search uh, of darkness yeah 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 you were in the first two yeah yeah just when you thought you know there's no more eighties horror to do anymore <laughs> they can, it keeps on going there there's so much in just that one decade because those are yeah. long documentaries too um, I think the first one was like four hours or something. Wow, but I'm in the uh, I'm I'm in the first I'm in the first one I'm in the second one uh, quite a bit, and then I'm in the th I'll be in the third one. Uh, so, yeah, we've we've done a lot of stuff. We did the first person shooter documentary, so I'm in that, which is about Doom and you know Wolfenstein and all those type of games. Yeah, yeah, and Doom also is kind of like a horror game too. Um, yeah, like what is it about horror that has like fascinated you for so long? Oh, I don't know. I think it's just like getting over your fears, you mm. know, probably dates back to childhood nightmares. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, just an overreactive imagine, uh, you know, your brain is just imagining all these things. It's very overimaginative. And, uh, um, and then you see the movies and you see other people's imagination and you kind of realize it's just fake. It's just a movie. Um, yeah, I think that was kind of where it started with the, the appeal of horror and monsters. Yeah, it's like this kind of like safe, like you're you're being scared, but like in a safe environment almost. Like it's like um, yeah, people who go on roller coasters. Uh huh. <laughs> like yeah, same they, kind know, of deal. Yeah, it's like a thrill ride, right? Like you you want to mm -hmm. get that excitement, um, but know that you know you're not going to like actually get get your head cut off or, or fall off yeah, or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, mine are always um, the type of horror I think that I've tended to like the best are the ones that feature monsters. Mm. And the, the monster is kind of like, you know, the bad guy, but the, but the monster is also sort of the protagonist. It's the one you connect with, you know, um, like Frankenstein, the creature from the Black Lagoon, you kind of uh, feel for the monster. So it's like the outcast, you know, you kind of root for that character. So I don't know, something about the monsters uh, appeal to, you know, people in that way too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, and that, that goes back really far too, like the original Frankenstein, um, you know, it's like this misunderstood uh, creature. And uh, yeah, I think that's true of like a lot of horror things, like Creature from the Black Lagoon as well. Like it's, it's not necessarily evil. It's, you know, people are coming to its house basically and causing a lot of problems for it. Um, so like, what are, yeah. what would you say is like, you know, one of your favorite monsters then? Oh, favorite monster. I mean, oh boy, there's Godzilla. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. big one. Um, yeah. Then maybe Frankenstein would be a second, the Frankenstein monster. Um, cause they, they've both been in a lot of movies. They've both gone through a lot of changes. Um, they've been explored from many different, you know, different movies, different styles, different interpretations. And they're kind of like, kind of like the hero character, mm -hmm. even though Godzilla, you know, is just laying waste to cities, <laughs> but then he becomes, you know, like the, the, def the defender who is fighting off the other monsters that are even worse than him. So I don't know. 
Yeah, no, it's cool. There's like that that tension. Like sometimes Godzilla is just like a force of nature. Sometimes Godzilla is like, you know, created from, you know, man's hubris with with scientific experiments. Have you ever seen Frankenstein Conquers the World? Oh yeah. That's <laughs> uh, Toho's uh yeah. yeah. That's Toho's interpretation of Frankenstein, which, which they, they call him Frankenstein in, right. in the movie. Uh, <laughs> um, which, yeah, that was like a, it was originally a sequel to War of the Gargantuas. Well, it is a sequel, um, but I think the the dubbing is different. The uh, As I remember, the English, transi- the English uh, translated version is, uh, it kind of removes the references to the Gargantuas, and now they're, mm. it's more about Frankenstein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's just a guy, right? Like, <laughs> because, yeah, you know, the, t- uh, the kaiju stuff is like a guy in a suit, but then Frank and- the Frankenstein's monster is just like, well, it's just kind yeah. of a caveman guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, he couldn't be uh, normal size either. They had to like boost him up to Godzilla right. size. Right. How else is he going to fight Godzilla otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or Baragon, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the titles too, was uh, Frankenstein versus Baragon. Oh, wow. I always wish that they did um, one with Dracula where they made um, Dracula that size. A giant Dracula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's kind of a fun idea. Although you'd think like, although then what Dracula has to attack Godzilla and other big monsters. Oh, that would actually make a lot of sense then because Dracula is too big. He can't drink human blood anymore. He has to attack oh. the big monsters. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. They actually did make one. I think it was called um, uh, Curse of Dracula or Lake of Dracula. Lake um, of Dracula. I, mean, I have to look into that again, but uh, I don't think it was anything like what I'm thinking of. Mm. Uh, but on the other side of the uh, spectrum, it'd be funny to see a, a human-sized Godzilla just shrink him <laughs> down. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be interested. Um, Probably not I, as terrifying. Yeah, he could fit through a door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Godzilla that can walk upstairs, not really as scary. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, like, so, you know, Godzilla, Godzilla f- films, kaiju films, monster movies. Um, these are all, yeah, like you're saying, the 80s are a big decade for this. And um, the mm-hmm. 80s were also like the sort of second coming of video games, right? Like after the 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 console crash or the, the game crash. Uh, you start getting any like NES, uh, the Sega Genesis, things like that coming in, and um, and that's you know where the nerd started, right? And and a lot of the nerd I feel like is about nostalgia. Like it started off being kind of like looking back at stuff that people thought were good at the time, and then sort of realizing like actually they were kind of pulling one over on kids with a lot of yeah. like <laughs> cut corners and, and you know cheap tricks and stuff. But I feel like over time it's it's you know, the characters mellowed a little bit and it's become a little more just about finding like, oh yeah, these things weren't, you know, maybe perfect or great, but we still grew up with them and there's something interesting or something of value mm-hmm. there. Um, and at the same time, the nerd, I feel like has become an object of nostalgia to a lot of people. Like, how do you, how do you process that? Oh, that the nerd itself has become Yeah, nostalgic. I mean, you've yeah. been doing it for since, you know, the 2000s. I remember watch, watching um, the first few episodes in, in like, 2006. Um, and I'm sure there are people, you know, younger than me who who were very young when they first saw that. So, to them, that's a childhood thing now. Yeah, that that's awesome because I hear that a lot, too. Like, people say, oh, I've been watching you since I was, a, you know, a little kid. And, like, you know, this, is, this person is, like way older now. <laughs> but I, I love it. I absolutely love that the nerd itself is nostalgic. Um, cause then it adds a whole other layer of commentary to it where, you know, like in the Contra episode, I'm like, you know, am I nostalgic for the game, like playing the game in the eighties, or am I also nostalgic for remembering the eighties and the two thousands? Mm. It, it's funny to think that when I was, uh, starting making these episodes, the, uh, the amount of time between, when the game originally came out and the review is now like the same amount of time as uh, from the, the the review to now. Right. It's like that much time passed again and it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild to think about. And it, it feels like whenever I go into that character, whenever I go into that mode, yeah, I'm sort of reliving it again. Like I'm always kind of like, uh, 
because like the character hasn't changed the character and the the show the format is is like still the same so right. it's like here i am uh uh doing it again it's like deja vu <laughs> it feels so similar <laughs> and it's it, it's very nostalgic to me too like just you know getting into the wardrobe and turning the camera on and and uh it's kind of like reliving old times yeah that makes that makes total sense do you think like that kids who are growing up today or like in the last 10 years, do you think they're going to have that same kind of relationship to like, you know, low quality uh, video games? Or do you think that like the existence of YouTube and like reviews and the internet and everything changed that? Because, you know, like if you're growing up in the eighties, you've basically got a couple of magazines and word of mouth to tell you what's good and what's not. So you end up playing all kinds of weird stuff that you might not have otherwise. Uh, Do you think that's that's different today? Or do you think kids will still be like coming across weird stuff on like Roblox or something? Oh yeah. Oh, there's, there's still weird, uh, games out there, but I don't know if it, it's anything like back then. Cause now everyone can be m- more critical because as soon as a game comes out, like if it's bad, like people will know already, people will know mm-hmm. before it comes out. It's like, right. Right we have the internet, but back then, yeah, like you said, it's just magazines and, uh, you kind of just accepted whatever you got. Uh, like, I can't believe I accepted the Ghostbusters game back then. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> you're just, you're just driving around buying equipment and try not to like touch beams together. And, but, but then on the other hand, I'm wondering like if some of these games that are good that people like, are they, are these games going to be looked back at, uh, and as if, well, these weren't as good as we remembered, you Mm -hmm. know, like, wow, I can't believe that game was, was something we played a lot. (laughs) I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think part of it is like when you're a kid, you don't really, or at least I didn't really understand that, like, you know, people were making things and they had a certain set of like conditions that they were making them under. You just sort of accepted that everything was this, like all media just came from somewhere. And Mm -hmm. if it was, if you had a bad time with it, you thought maybe it was your fault for not understanding it. You sort of didn't realize like, oh no, they they (laughs) made a bad thing here. Yeah. I I can only remember very few times when I got fed up with a game at that, you know, at that stage in my life. I mean, I I got frustrated with games a lot, but it wasn't like, uh, you know, there, there were very few times when I, I would, criticize the game itself. It was always just, I'm mad that I screwed up. I'm mad I lost. But the the only times I think I remember where I was like legitimately confused by a game, uh, one was Metal Gear on NES. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where I was supposed to go. It was very confusing and very awkward. You're going around punching dogs and stuff. <laughs> And then uh, the other one was Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, that's the Mm. famous example that, I I mean, I guess I made it famous, but um, I specifically remember uh, renting that from the video store, bringing it home and only playing it for like two minutes and was like, this is, this is garbage. Right. (laughs) And then that was your weekend, right? Like at that time, because it was like, like, you know, what do you do? You go outside uh, or you just keep plugging away at it, but I, it's not like you can take it back. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't, I don't remember ever driving back to you know, um, asking my parents, my mom usually like take to take me back and uh, get something else. That never happened. But I do remember that my mom would would re- return stuff when it was due back for me, and she'd do it all the time. <laughs> and mm. and um, I mean, obviously, she was my transportation. Like I didn't have a car or anything, Mm -hmm. but, um, I remember it was always like, are you done with this? Because I need to take it back. Cause it was like, no, no, just a little longer. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, like the, the Sunday or the Monday after the renting something on Friday, you'd have to go return it, which is such a weird thing to think about now. It is. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I don't remember what it was about, but sometimes I think I recall like she would return it early sometimes because she was going out and it was Mm. like, here's my chance to return it. Right. You don't want to make two trips. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and sometimes I was just like not having that. I'd be a a real pain about it. So, (laughs) (laughs) Well, as a kid, you understand like, you know, 
I, as an adult, you're like thinking about, okay, well, if I if I can do all my errands on one trip, then I don't have to go out tomorrow. But as a kid, you're like, hey, I want to yeah. play more Mega Man 3 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Crazy thing to think about now, like returning stuff to the the video store. I mean, it, it, they they do exist. I mean, there right, are some. Right, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier to, uh, to stream it, to be honest. I mean, like you'll never click on a movie and be, and be like, oh, somebody else clicked on it already. I can't <laughs> click on it. <laughs> somebody, yeah. somebody rented it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, it is, it's nice. Like, um, the, the thing that is a problem for me sometimes when I'm trying to find stuff is like, if you're talking about some of, you know, this lower budget or like harder to find stuff, I feel like what happens nowadays is that studios or, or, you know, production companies or, or whatever will buy up the rights to a lot of these movies and then just decide that they don't really want to do anything with them because they can't really see a way to make money from putting them on streaming sites. So like the only way to watch a lot of these things is either on physical media or sometimes you'll get someone putting up a bootleg on YouTube, you get lucky. But do you ever run into that? You're trying to find something. And I imagine you probably have a lot of that stuff on physical media though. Yeah, I, I do. Um, but I'm always trying to figure out like, how, how can I get it quicker? How can I click on Especially if you're like, if you're talking about a bunch of stuff in one video, like you have to kind of cycle through it quickly or get to the scene you're referencing yeah. to, to like refresh your memory on like, okay, what, it, what is it that happens in that one scene? Or like, what is it that I'm trying to talk about? Um, like I just did a video all about Bronson cave and mm-hmm. just all, all the uh, movies that were filmed there. And the amount of movies that I had to go through to comment on the scenes or like to talk about the specific of like what is in that shot, you know, it was like I, I had to like find those parts. So I couldn't just be sitting there cycling through DVDs and stuff. I had to right. like get it on streaming. And some of those movies aren't really streaming anywhere in, unless, you know, right, like you yeah. said, there's a, a bootleg or somebody put something on YouTube you know, it's always different, just like a case by case basis. Yeah, I feel like it's you know it's really convenient for a lot of stuff. Um, but then you know, if you're looking for something weird, it can be kind of a kind of a pain sometimes. Yeah, then there's so, things you never expect, like Tales from the Crypt, a huge right. show. I mean, I yeah, remember that yeah. was a really. <laughs> it's not streaming anywhere. Like you can't find Tales really? from the Crypt. Yeah, I mean, unless I'm wrong, maybe maybe see if they if they might have posted yeah. it recently but like it's you know and i know it with some of those shows it's not as simple as just putting it out there like they need to like they, they i guess there's two ways to do it they could post it uh with a really low picture quality it could be something sure, yeah. really crappy um or it could be like they go back to the like the, the master tapes and they right you know, like like I heard with Star Trek: The Next Generation, like they had to go back to the original, like negatives because it was like a shot on film but edited on video because it was for TV back then. Sure, yeah. But to make it look good today, they have to go back and essentially re-edit it from the original sources. And if you watch Deep Space Nine, they haven't done that yet, so it looks like it was taped yeah. off VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then a lot of you know, in a lot of cases. Um, those originals just like don't exist anymore because either they were thrown out or they were, you know, deliberately destroyed or, or lost. Um, and I feel like that's something you've talked about before is just like the sort of Hollywood history that um, keeps getting, uh, keeps getting lost and like all the things that we're losing because of that. And that could be there be like, you know, the, the fire that happened a few years ago um, at universal or the fact mm-hmm. that, you know, they, they'll take like a historic set or something and then just demolish it to put up uh, whatever's the newest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe they, uh, they demolished the Phantom stage. Um, the, the oldest standing movie set in history right. uh, was there for 80 years. That's crazy. And then just overnight, it seems it's just gone. Yeah. No, it's wild. I mean, it belongs in a museum, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like even, to, you know, to even salvage something from it, like just yeah, like yeah. put it into, break it into pieces at least and like, you know, auction them off or like, I don't know, like do something, but it's just, oh, it's all, I guess, just in a dumpster. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, in a, uh, a landfill, I meant to say, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe someone will find pieces of it. Um, but I saw a, um, I don't know if you've, seen defunct land before oh okay it's a youtube series and they do like a bunch of uh abandoned places or like um, yeah it's like attractions a, that have shut down yeah exactly and they had one on a, a garfield dark ride recently and um they were talking about how when they when they took that down and they redid it just sort of as like a retro throwback to like this this dark ride what it used to be before they had the garfield deal uh pause inc made them shoot footage of them destroying all of the the art and stuff that they had created for the ride because they didn't want anyone to resell it. So oh. sometimes you get stuff like that where it's like, you know, companies huh. would rather make sure that, you know, no one's selling their stuff or whatever than, than keep this piece of, of media history. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, in the case of The Phantom, that would be kind of weird because, you know, that movie was... 1925 but right, yeah. with, with Garfield that that's that's interesting uh also like I think I might have heard of that dark ride um where was that uh I want to say New Jersey um hmm. but I could be wrong um let me just yeah it was Kennywood um I have heard of it yeah, yeah. so it's it's gone now yeah it's gone so basically they uh, um so they had this old mill ride, and um, I think the Garfield thing was in the 90s. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, they redid it, and now it's sort of like a throwback to, like, the retro. Uh, oh, okay. The retro, um, the older, the original <laughs> theme. But that Garfield's uh, Nightmare ride was um, was pretty well, wild. <laughs> well, there goes that video. <laughs> 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 I was uh, I was actually, um, yeah, it's all coming back to me now. Um I was going to try to do a nerd episode in there if I did a Garfield game, but I guess that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, I mean a Garfield review could still happen, but Oh, totally, not, but not the yeah, ride. the uh, the theme park uh ride definitely does not exist anymore. So, I mean uh, you could still go and and you know talk about how it used to be there, but um, uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's I mean, yeah, something like Kennywood has has been around for like decades and decades and gone through so many changes. Um, but there's still this you know, aspect of it that stays the same. And then, you know, they decide to to throw back to what things used to be. Um, do you ever feel like a kind of pressure to, to do more like, uh, you know, kind of like retro nerd episodes? Because I, I feel like there's been this trend of kind of mellowing out a little bit more, looking at some more contemporary stuff. Um, and then you did that recent episode that was sort of like framed as like a lost uh, oh episode. yeah. Do you think that's is that something that you you ever feel like? Oh, I gotta I gotta go back. <laughs> I gotta go back to the past again. Oh, uh, you mean like like specifically like the um the the last ninja episode? Yeah, or just you know shooting stuff in that kind of uh like old school like uh really really angry video game nerd style. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, that's what the the last ninja was for sure because. I mean, the show itself is so much like the same, I mean, except for like the occasional, like, um, like the Vegas episode, you know, right. it was a totally different format. It was like a parody of uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So every now and then there's kind of like this extra big project. Oh, I really want to do this. I really want to do this Vegas episode. And mm-hmm. I did that. But usually it's so much the same that sometimes I do feel like, oh, the only way to make this even more the same is to make it like it's on an old camera from, you know, mm. not too old, not like VHS, but like <laughs> right, right. a very specific time, the 2000s, which is a hard uh, look to to pin down because it's kind of, you know, it's it's digital video. You're still in the early age digital video, but it's not HD yet. And you're trying to get that exact same look, which actually I wanted to use the same camera, but I had to green screen myself into the same exact background. But it was tricky because if I used the old camera, the green screen wouldn't have keyed as clean. Mm. So I had to just shoot it on HD, but then like dumb it down. Right, right. And the uh, and I used the same microphones, um, the exact same microphone for the voiceover and the exact same one for the, uh, the on-screen parts where it's just a shotgun mic hanging over me. Right. 
and I wanted to match the same kind of reverb. You hear a little bit of, of reverb in it. So yeah, I mean, that was fun. That was really fun because it was a big challenge, like trying to make it look exactly the same or as close as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a challenge that a lot of people are trying to take on right now as like, oh, yeah. you know, throwback stuff becomes a little more popular. Like, okay, how do we actually nail this look down? And it is like trickier than, you know, just a low resolution or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean also like people trying to make something look like the eighties or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. That too. And I feel like <laughs> it's funny how like the eighties, yeah. I feel like are always popular, like, yeah. um, except maybe like right afterwards, but Mm -hmm. You know, in the 2000s, there was an 80s throwback. And now I feel like there's another 80s throwback with, you know, yeah. retro wave type stuff. Um, I've seen so many Elrond style games <laughs> on Steam oh, yeah. in the last like <laughs> year or so. It's it's really funny. It's become a whole genre, I feel like. But um, there's a lot of um, neon when they do the 80s, like, like a little yeah. bit too much where it's like, okay, like we get it. It's the eighties. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that, there wasn't that much neon. Like, the, the, right. like, yeah, there was, but, but you, you kind of are taking it too far, Yeah. but people, but you know, that, that kind of became a style. Like there's that look, but what, what's cool now, what I'm interested, I'm kind of more about like seeing the two thousands because yeah. it, it hasn't been done a lot, but, but I saw it in the, it was that movie, uh, turning red. Mm, mm -hmm, mm hmm. It, it took place in the like early 2000s. So I thought that was cool that we're, we're starting to see that decade uh, being represented. Yeah, I um, I know some some younger people who, you know, were, were very young during the, the early 2000s. And it's pretty wild to like to see them talk about it. How, you know, I used to talk about like the 80s or the 90s. Um, and you know, they're, they're nostalgic for like Rihanna songs and, uh, <laughs> and the, the first Xbox and stuff like that. And, um, it's, it's wild to be like, oh, wow. Yeah. Time just keeps passing on. Huh? You just, that's just yeah. how it works. But, um, another thing that's changed a lot since the mid two thousands is YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know Cinemasker and AVGN stuff wasn't, uh, didn't start there, but that was where it sort of blew up. And, mm -hmm. um, how have you seen or like noticed YouTube change since you started that project? Oh, a, a lot. It's, um, it's really different now. It seems, uh, well, there's less people on it, but I mean, it even seemed back then it, it seemed like there was a lot, like, how could this get any bigger? Mm -hmm. I remember when you couldn't schedule a video. I remember when you couldn't, uh, post a video longer than like 10 minutes or something or, yeah. Or what was it, fifteen minutes or something? But monetizing it wasn't a thing right, like when right. it first came out, and like that that took a long time. Like I don't think uh, I was probably on YouTube for a good six years at least before I saw any money from it. Any income was from other sites um, like game trailers. Right. So we right. would debut the episodes on there, and that's how I got paid. So. Yeah, the idea of, of getting any money for YouTube was, you know, was was unheard of. And then it, it uh, I remember YouTube uh, was pretty good for a while with that, and then it's it sort of went down. Like now, now you have to sell brand deals uh, right. directly. Uh, that wasn't really a thing we had to do before, but um, a lot of it is, you know, there's a lot of things like like the cursing. The, the cursing is kind of a problem a little bit mm. sometimes, and. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like, it seems to me like it's harder to monetize it now on YouTube. That That's one thing that's different. Um, there's just a lot more people on YouTube. It's 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 kind of become like, uh, there's just so much to watch on there. Right. But yeah, yeah, it, it's totally different. I feel like um, a lot of modern content creators, and this is something that's been going on for a while, but, uh, you know, continues to today is that a lot of, people put their whole, uh, their whole lives into their videos or their social media or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe they feel like there's this pressure to do that because like it makes them more relatable or whatever. But, um, one thing that I, I think a lot of people have noticed about your online presence is that you don't do much of that. And like, was that a deliberate decision mm -hmm. at some point that you sat down and said, okay, like I want to keep this 
separate from, you know, from the rest mm-hmm. of my life or like, I don't need to give people like a look into everything I'm doing all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I'm not sure of the, uh, all the context to what you're saying, but you mean like a lot of people who they, they, they show more personal stuff you're saying or, or yeah, like what I feel, their, feel their like life a is lot like? Of, of like, you know, content creators are like, this is me. I'm giving you like a view into exactly who I am and like all of my life. And you can feel like you kind of know me. And there's mm-hmm. that sort of parasocial thing where their audience knows them, but they don't really know their audience, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I keep it very separate. Um, perhaps if it was just me living all by myself, maybe. Like mm-hmm. maybe then I, I would always, I would be just having a camera on me all the time. I don't <laughs> <Right>. know. <laughs> yeah. Being like, hey, I'm eating dinner, but I'll just <laughs> film myself, you know, <laughs> why not? But, uh, you know, if I were to do that, I'd be uh, not only letting myself into the, the world in that way, but I'd also be letting my whole family into it too. Right, yeah. And, you know, uh, having two children who are too young to have any concept, any of that, like yeah. I, I keep all that separate because... It's just how do you know what what you're gonna want to do when you're grown up? Like sure, I yeah. don't want yeah to to have um no choice in the matter or you know so I, I keep my family life completely separate. Um, I do talk about it a lot though in my book mm-hmm. especially, which should be coming out soon hopefully. Oh cool. Um, so I mean I think the the book is a good ri- uh, written format for me to to put all the stuff down that uh you know um, that I've been through, Mm. um, just like, here's my career and also my personal life and, and how they kind of relate. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely where I I put a lot of personal stuff down. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, not not like casual stuff, more like (laughs) impactful, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, impactful stuff that I think people would find interesting or that would give people some kind of inspiration, um, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's funny to think about, like, I have some friends who have kids and, uh, you know, they have to figure out like, okay, well, are we putting pictures of them online or are we talking about them or, or, you Mm -hmm. know, how are we dealing with this stuff? And like another kind of related thing to that is, uh, I feel like just, I, I'm so glad that I, I didn't grow up uh, or that I grew up before social media was like a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't know how much you engage with, you know, I mean, I know you're on Twitter and and um, and stuff like that, but do you ever like think about like, oh God, like my kids are going to have to go to school and like deal with like, you know, being on Facebook and, and all this stuff. And it's like, um, I feel like there was a certain kind of ability to just do dumb stuff in the 80s oh, yeah. and 90s and 2000s and just it would be forgotten. Probably. Oh yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, the internet never forgets, right? Like it's going to be there forever. Um, do yeah. you ever like, do you think about that kind of stuff? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, like I grew up in a different time. Yeah, for sure. Um, where there was no social media or anything like that. Uh, people were more isolated, but yeah, like nowadays, uh, people are born into it. It's there, you know? So then I think it's just, like a matter of choice, like, well, what are you posting? Like, you know, don't over post, don't post too much stuff. So yeah, it's kind of like now it's, it's kind of like, uh, your choice. Like, how do you want to use your social media? Like, I don't really use it a lot. I kind of just post about like, you know, if I have a video coming out or mm-hmm. something, or maybe something cool to share or something like that. But, uh, you know, I'm not talking about like what I'm doing day to day and like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think that's, yeah. uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are starting to, to yeah. come around. Even people who, you know, are like, you know, in their thirties or forties are starting to be like, oh, maybe I don't need to do all this. <laughs> maybe oh, yeah. I don't need to keep up with everything all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the amount of time though it would take, like, I mean, even yeah. though you could, sure, you could post something quickly, you move on from it. But like, if you're engaging, you're there, it, it that takes time and focus away from making videos. So so let's say, uh, so today I can use all my time to work on this new video I'm working on, mm-hmm. or I could spend some of that time on social media. I just decide, well, I'm going to use all my time to make videos. 
So that's that's my work time. That's what I that do. I'm sense. making videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm writing a script. I'm actually writing a script now. But you know, so oh, sorry. Yeah. To, sorry oh no, that's that's all. Oh no, I'll, I'll take away time to do this. This is cool. You know. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, but that makes yeah. sense, though. I mean, I think a lot of people just think, oh, I'm, I'm missing out. I'm missing out. I got to check because maybe there'll be a job opportunity. Maybe there'll be something cool happening. And it's like, okay, maybe. But also, like, that's a lot of time that you're spending scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't really understand the, like all the, I mean, to a certain degree I do, but uh, I remember when uh, MySpace came out Mm -hmm. and it was a brand new thing and everybody was on it and everybody's talking about it. And, and I'm just like, okay, all right. Like, I didn't really, I didn't really get it to, to be honest. I wasn't really like, I was never into it even when it came out because when was that? That was like 2005 or something. Yeah. Like early, mid 2000s. Yeah. So let's say I was about 25 when that came out. Like, well, like I had 25 years without it. Right. So like, <laughs> I didn't really want to, I had to really add there. Um, but uh, YouTube, on the other hand, that was a different story because I was able to post my work. Like that's, right. that's my medium. That's what I want to show is like uh, videos and film projects that I work on and stuff. So I mean, my MySpace had a video thing on it too, but it it never reached uh, yeah. YouTube standard. No, I think it mostly ended up being used by bands because the the audio stuff was much better than the their yeah, video. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of of you know like daily daily routines and time and stuff, like you know you've uh, you've talked a lot about having um, a bunch of projects that you're working on and you know trying to juggle the nerd stuff and, you know, other video mm-hmm. projects and this book um, and just feeling like, you know, there's not enough time um, to do all these things. Like, do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? Like, how do you, are you, you know, you're juggling being a parent and and trying to make mm-hmm. content. Um, how do you decide like, okay, here's what I'm going to prioritize. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just got to find what's realistic because anybody who works on any type of project and, that project is like every minute of your day. Cause that's what you're doing right mm-hmm. now. And it's, and, and it's, these things are time consuming, you know, like you're, you're writing the script or what is it? Or like, let, let's say it's a game review. So you're playing the game. You got to record all that footage. You're uh, writing notes with everything. Then you start putting those notes together, constructing a script out of it all. Then eventually once that script's done, you're shooting, then you're editing after all that's done, you're, you're doing sound and, you know, you go through the whole process and it's such a time consuming thing. But now on top of all that, there's another project you're doing. So what do you do? Do you, do you stop one to work on the other? Do you just mm-hmm. go back and forth or do you wait? Do you just finish one before you move on to the next? So then, then let's say, yeah, now, now there's three projects up in the air you're working on or five the more you add, now it's like, okay, you can't do all these things. Right. Like, even if you're, you know, you plan it out like, okay, um, the month of May is going to be this one. That's going to be the main project this month. And then June is going to be this. July is going to be that. Um, you could plan it all out. Um, but you have to really be able to predict, like really know, like, okay, how, how many projects c- should I really be trying to do? at a time um because what what it boils down to it's always one after another like you Mm. can't physically be shooting two things and being in two places at once or writing while you're shooting one or like you know Mm -hmm. there's a certain point where it's too much is is too much so you just got to find what the right uh balance is because that that's how you make yourself real busy and crazy (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Um, are are you, are you someone who who feels like there's just like not enough hours in the day to do all the things you want to do, or or are you are mm-hmm. you you know getting better at like figuring out like okay here's the thing that I want to do and I'm going to do that and then I'll worry about you know the next thing. Yeah, I I mean I plan them all in a row because because I I do have all these projects I want to do and there's 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 so many like too many so then you gotta you gotta narrow it down be like okay well let's see I'll, I'll work on this one. Now, when that one's done, I'll get to this one. You put them all in a row and you, lots of them, you know, they have to kind of wait till next year or something. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so when you're working on one, sometimes you might have an intended start date on the next one. So you're like, okay, well, this one's going to take me a week. Uh, so the Bronson Cave video, for example, I'm like, I'll, I'll finish this in a week. That's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, the week goes by and all I did was scan through footage of movies. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. So, so I didn't predict accurately how long that, that needs to scan through all those movies. Right. So next thing it's like two weeks and I'm still doing it. And then that video kind of turned into like a, a good three, four week project. Um, it took so long to make. So then your, your next project gets postponed. You can't start the next one until that one's done. So next, now you have kind of like a backed up schedule mm. and you just kind of have to, um, you know, give yourself more of a buffer. And even after so many years, it's still tough to do that. Like you, you can't always know how long something's going to take to make. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It can be hard to like estimate that stuff. Yeah. And just be like, okay, here's exactly how long it's going to take and I'll do it and it's done. And then I do the next thing. Stuff tends to like, you know, get away from you. Um, do you ever, do you feel, you know, pressure to, or like expectations to be doing like a certain kind of thing? Um, and, you know, if you're working on something, you know, that, that is more of like a mm -hmm. personal, you know, passion project, um, do, are you, you know, weighing in your head, okay, this is something that I, I really want to do. And that is something I'm really fascinated by, but then, you know, this other thing is going to get more views probably are going to get more traffic or people are going to respond to it. Like, how do you uh, decide, you know, which of those things to do? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I make the thing that uh, they want to see the most, the thing I want to do too. Um, like I inject my own uh, passion in, into whatever it is. Mm. Uh, so like, uh, for example, you know, the nerd videos get the most views of anything I do. Uh, that's, that's always the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so if that's the thing that is, uh, th that's sustaining the channel, well then I'll, I'll do that, but I'll make it fun for me too. So, um, like the Vegas episode that was right. you know hu huge for me. It was like a, a passion project. Yeah. Like, I want to do this. Um, I want to really get into the Hunter S. Thompson character, but apply it to video games. Mm. Like with the same type of critiques where he's like, you know, um, just, you know, hates the system and everything. And then it's like, we'll make it about like video games. So that was, it was a nerd episode, but it was one that I was really into. Um, and then I also like doing the, uh, the, the ordinary ones where it's like in the, in, you know, just the, the, the white shirt and critiquing the games. Like those are all, really fun too. Uh, like it's therapeutic in a way, like you get mm. to just trash this game. You know? <laughs> and they even, you know, they even like it when I do a game I enjoy too, like Contra. Uh, so I, I do one about Contra or Majora's Mask or mm. uh, uh, it, it could be a game that that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just make those fun, but then there's certain videos where it's like, this isn't a nerd episode. This can't be right. It's like something, it's something else, you know, it's something totally different. Uh, like the Bronson K video, just as an example, cause it came out fairly recently. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always doing stuff I enjoy. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just, I think as the only prerequisite, I guess, is just that, uh, I have to do a, a nerd episode to sustain the channel, but I make them fun. I make them right. always just a blast to make. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, you wouldn't want it to, you know, become a chore, right? <laughs> Cause that would be. Yeah, exactly. Not much fun. And probably people would realize it would be like, oh, okay, well, you know, if your heart's not in it, that's going to come out, but. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could always have people who will claim your heart's not in it right from from whatever on the other side they can't tell and they just they think you're not into it but th that can happen too yeah i mean do you ever um not that i like condone reading the comments or anything but mm -hmm. do you ever you know get into some of that stuff and and find you know people who are maybe like ah oh, it's not as good as the old stuff or oh it's you know it's whatever um mm -hmm. like does that ever do you just try to not think about that or or Oh yeah. I mean, as long as you're, you're enjoying it as, I mean, are you yeah. work like, you know, I'm working my ass off on it and I'm like, this is really good what I just did, but you're right. not going to please everybody. You please most people. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so just, just focus on that. 
because uh, you know people saying that they're not as good as the old ones they've been saying that since 2007 <laughs> like i've been getting <laughs> i've been getting the exact same comments since 2007 so it's like does that mean uh only 2006 was any good <laughs> right because right, right. actually to be honest i disagree i mean i i think 2006 was was uh the pioneering year mm. that was that was when it was a new idea but those episodes like because I, I you know you know how you're your your own worst critic right, right. Um, i'll i'll look at episodes from 2006 and be like oh i i, I really just didn't do a good job on that one <laughs> or like okay that one that one kind of sucks like you watch the uh you know uh, the, the Mick Kids episode or mm. uh, Master Chew and the Drunkard Who, Wally Bear. I'm like looking at those episodes. I'm like, okay, these are like, you know, these three minute episodes where I kind of just, just said the first thing that was on my mind. You know? <laughs> didn't <laughs> right, really right. like, didn't really delve in as much, but hey, but you know, that was 2006. That's what it was. Right. Right. Um, and you had to do that stuff to get to the point where you're doing stuff that you can be prouder of. Yeah. Yeah. So you just keep doing your thing, just do your best. And, you know, that's all you can do. Cool. Um, and yeah, I guess we can wrap things up, but I'm, I'm kind of curious, like say money and time is like no object. W what is like your, your dream project? And, and maybe if you do have something that you think you are going to be doing, you don't have to like, you know, give <laughs> yeah. that away or anything, but. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Like you're talking about something hypothetical. Where... Yeah. Yeah. Like a, you know, a big movie project or, or something else like that wow um i mean that like yeah it's it's so uh i could go anywhere with that answer i think right yeah but because i feel like i'm my brain is too active thinking about clever ways to make something big on a small scale i'm always thinking uh like mm. realistic and feasible like yeah i th i have a lot of ideas for movies that could be done in like one room and stuff like that kind of like a TV episode or like really specifically like a Twilight Zone episode where it's this elaborate story, but it's, mm. it's done very minimalistically, you know, it's done in like just a, f a few rooms and uh, just a few actors delivering a lot of really good lines. And, you know, uh, like the writing part is always free. Like as long as you can write it, uh, you, then all you need is like the, the actors to pull it off and, and, uh, but it's, it's something big, like something like Hollywood level. Um, gee, I mean, th there's so many ways that I can go with it. Um, I feel like I might just be totally imagining this, but I think you, mm -hmm. you once talked about an uh, idea for something called like Spaceship Hell. Oh, Starship Hell. Starship yeah, that's Hell, one of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, yeah, it's it, it's one on a big, big list of, of films, uh, but it's not even like... That, it, that that one honestly is pretty low mm. that on the on the, the list. That's why I brought it up on the podcast because I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm never gonna make this one. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny yeah. in premise, but um, you know, I mean, I because I, I I just come up with ideas like um, like okay, here's just an idea. Like this could be done on a small scale. It could be done on a big scale. But I thought of one where it's about um, this actor who. Uh, is cursed to see the audience who are watching him all the time. Mm. So when he's on the set, as soon as he gets in the character and the cameras are rolling, his brain is already seeing into the future <laughs> of the audiences watching on all their different TVs or wherever this movie is playing. And he's so overwhelmed by it. And he sees things that he shouldn't be seeing or right. things that he, you know, and um, like he might see like, a murder happening or something like that. Like, I feel like that, that, yeah, there needs to be some big catalyst to the story mm -hmm. to really push it and make him have to like decide who he tells about this. But the idea came from the, uh, just the idea of like, whenever you're watching um, a movie or a show or something and you kind of take for granted, like, okay, these characters are there, they're recorded, mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's it's a stable event in history, but what if it was like sort of live where the characters might be able to see you through your screen? Mm. Um, and you, actually, you know where I got the idea? It was because I think, you know, these past couple of years, we've been using um, applications like this, like Zoom and uh, like right. Google and Skype. You know, we were so used to talking to each other on the screen that 
kids see it a lot now too. Like, uh, mm. um, you know, my children, they'll, they'll like talk with their, their family and stuff on a, a screen a lot of times, but then they'll watch something where it's like a, a pre-recorded movie. It's something fictional. Right. It's not. And I think I thought to myself, you know, as a young kid, how do you process the different in your head? Like when you're, when you're re- really young and you're just learning this, do you uh, associate the pre-recorded human face talking on a screen with somebody who could see you back and talk to you. Right. And it kind of gave me a creepy feeling like, oh, this is, what if there was like some kind of movie you're watching, but the person can see you. And that's what is happening to this actor where he's cursed to see visions of all the people through the screen. So that's an idea. That's the first time <laughs> that I've had. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, it's absolutely t- terrifying. Yeah. It, so that's a, another premise for a, uh, you know, a creepy movie that I, I want to make. But, you know, the thing is that idea pops in your head and it's like, okay, well, that's like a, a hundred ideas now. Right. Which, which one do you like the best? Which one do you want to make next? But uh, yeah, th- there you go. The first time hearing that idea. <laughs> uh, they- <laughs> yeah, I hope you make that because it sounds like a, just like the experience of, uh, you know, anxiety, but with the supernatural aspect to it. Um, yeah. And just like, you know, yeah, the screen thing too. I never really thought about that of like, you know, because it's it's weird, I think, um, for a lot of people doing the, I still find it unnatural, like the talking like I can talk to someone over the phone or over a podcast like this because it's, you know, I grew up making phone calls, but then to yeah. be looking at someone and then also seeing that little picture of yourself in the corner, um, yeah. it's a very strange experience. And I can't imagine being a kid and like having that just be a thing. And then, okay. And then you're watching YouTube and you're watching TV all the time. And it's like, you know, because yeah. when I was a kid, I had a hard enough time sometimes being like, you know, uh, realizing that TV was like fictional and being like, oh no, they're going to get caught or whatever. Um, but you know, if you, if you grow up talking to screens, then it's like, wow, that's, that's really an interesting, uh, yeah. experience. It's like what Star Trek is real now. Right. Like they, they actually invented that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is weird. It's something we never would have imagined. Like, uh, talking to somebody and, and seeing them, on the screen is like, it's relatively new. Like it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I can't remember exactly when it started, but yeah, a video call. Like I, I, I mean, now you don't think about it. It's, right, it's, right. All, it's all the time, but, but yeah, that I don't remember it being like even weird. I think I just remember it being like, cool. Like, Oh wow, we can do this. But, yeah. And then some technology goes backwards. You know, we talk on phones, but now we text it all instead. So <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny too, like the the symbols, even on like a phone for, you know, making a call or something, it's like, you know, a picture of an old timey yeah. telephone or like, you know, the, yeah. the save icon in a lot of programs is still a floppy disk. And I feel like probably a lot of kids look at those and are like, what, like, what does that even mean? <laughs> oh, the floppy disk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, but the those, save uh, button. Yeah. Yeah, but like, like emojis, it goes all the way back to hieroglyphics. Mm, it's just mm-hmm. like a modern form of just, you know, these little visual, you know, icons to to tell you what, you know, you're saying. Yeah, no, it's funny because like you said, like some technology sometimes seems to go back and forth. And like, I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, you know, te- technology just gets more advanced and, you know, we just, you know, get more sophisticated over time. Um and we even talk about, you know, like, oh, the, the new console generation. It's like the, the newer, better one. But um, it doesn't always work out that way, right? Like, you can still go back to um, some Atari games or some NES games, and they're, yeah m- you know, more interesting or more engaging than some games that are coming out today. So, yeah. Yeah, technology. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's weird and, and wild. But, um yeah. Yeah, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you've got, uh, you know, you've got to get back to, to script writing and stuff. But thank you so much for coming on. This has been uh, a real treat for me because, like I said, I've been watching your stuff since, yeah, wow, mid-2000s. Um, and uh, I always thought it was interesting, you know, how that sort of became a genre of of guy on YouTube, of, you know, that, that persona. Um, and um, mm-hmm. I think it's cool that'll to a lot of people to see that you're, you know, still doing this stuff and still, 
uh, still enjoying it. So, yeah. Well, thank you. And uh, also, and once again, thank you for the really awesome article you wrote about me a few years back. And also the, the recent uh, five questions you gave me. <laughs> I think it's the first time anyone's asked me, what's your favorite article of clothing? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, pants, pants are good. <laughs> right. No, I feel you on the socks thing, though. I feel like, you know, getting yeah. a, a good pair of socks that is going to last. Uh, yeah. It's surprisingly tough. So um, I hope you, uh, you you know, find the, uh, the solution to that problem soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, f- I found some pretty decent ones. And then I'll look into those other ones that you, you sent, the uh, Bombas, they're called? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've tried a few of those. They're a little, the problem is, you know, you get the nicer socks and they're like crazy expensive. But, um, yeah. but if it lasts, then, then that's okay. It's better to buy one yeah. expensive thing than a bunch of cheap things, I guess. If it doesn't squeeze your toes... Yeah. I just give yeah. some toe room. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your, your like, gloves have fingers. Why don't socks have toes? I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't work. But <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I think they do make those. But, yeah, no, that is, that's weird to think about. Yeah, why don't socks have, huh. Yeah. Well, uh, Unsolved Mysteries, I guess. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you uh, again. And, uh, yeah, you all know where to find James Rolfe online. Um, but if you don't, YouTube, uh, Cinemassacre, Cinemassacre on Twitter. And um, when's that uh, that book coming out, do you think? Oh, uh, maybe very soon. Oh, yeah. cool. I mean, I sent it off. It's, it's good to go. I think uh, I added a lot of new stuff to it because so much has happened in the last couple of years. But, <laughs> right, uh, yeah, know. eventful, yeah, a couple of years there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm... I'm you know, looking forward to sharing that. That's going to be, you know, the, the most I've ever shared of anything. Like, it's my full life story. So, <laughs> there you go. Oh, very cool. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. And, um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Cool. Thank you. You too.